I have divided this lecture into three parts and in the first part we will understand what are periodic discrete time signals and we will also see the condition for a discrete time signal to be periodic and in the second part we will understand how to calculate the period of a composite discrete time signal and in the third part we will derive the condition for a complex exponential discrete time signal and sinusoidal discrete time signal to be periodic. So let's begin with the first very important question that is what are periodic discrete time signals? A discrete time signal is said to be periodic if the signal remains the same after performing the left shifting operation and the right shifting operation by k times n. k is an integer, k is an integer and n is known as the fundamental time period of the discrete time signal and like k, n is also an integer. This is one important point that the fundamental time period n is an integer. So whenever we perform the time shifting operation whether the left shifting or the right shifting on a discrete time signal by kn and we have the same signal then we will say that the signal we are having is periodic in nature. To understand this point let's take one signal xn this is the discrete time signal and let's say this signal is having the fundamental time period equal to n. This is having the fundamental time period equal to n. And now if we perform the left shifting operation by k times n, we will have a new signal x n plus k times n. And if we perform the right shifting operation by k times n, we will have a new signal xn minus kn. And if these two signals are same as the initial signal xn, we will say that signal xn is a periodic signal. So this is the condition for a signal to be periodic signal and using this condition we can calculate the fundamental time period n. Now we will understand why we are having the same signal after performing the right shifting and the left shifting by k times n. And for this I have taken one example waveform. This is the waveform of signal xn and you can see that in this waveform one particular structure is repeated from minus infinity to plus infinity and we know the fundamental time period n is the extension of the smallest repeated structure which in this case is this structure and therefore n is equal to 2 minus minus 1 and then plus 1 plus 1 is for n equal to 0 this will give us n equal to 4. Therefore, when you perform the left shifting or the right shifting of this signal by the integer multiple of 4, you will get the same signal. This implies if you perform the shifting by k times 4, you will have the same signal. And to understand this, let's say k is equal to 1. This will give you 4. So perform the left shifting or the right shifting by 4 and you will find you have the same signal. You know how to perform the shifting operation and therefore you can do this by yourself and after performing the shifting you will have the same signal and this is happening because the same type of structure is repeated from minus infinity to plus infinity. If this repetition is not from minus infinity to plus infinity you will not have the same signal. Therefore, for all the periodic signals, a same type of a structure or you can say a particular a structure is repeated from minus infinity to plus infinity. This particular condition is very important. So I hope you now understand what are periodic discrete time signals 
and the condition for a discrete time signal to be periodic. Now we will move on to the next part of this lecture and in this part we will talk about the composite discrete time signals. Let's say signal Xn is a composite discrete time signal and by composite signals we mean it is obtained after combining two or more signals and signal Xn is let's say equal to X1n plus X2n. X1n is a periodic signal and this signal is having the fundamental time period equal to n1. X2n is also a periodic signal having the fundamental time period equal to n2. Now if you try to remember while discussing the periodic continuous time signals I told you that if there is a composite continuous time signal xt which is equal to continuous time signal x1t plus continuous time signal x2t and signal x1t is a periodic continuous time signal with the fundamental period equal to t1 signal x2t is also a periodic continuous time signal with the fundamental period equal to t2 then this signal composite signal xt will be periodic will be periodic only when only when the ratio t1 by t2 is a rational number and this signal this signal will be aperiodic if the ratio t1 by t2 is an irrational number. The same thing is applicable in case of composite discrete time signal xn. The ratio n1 by n2, the ratio n1 by n2, if rational then this implies signal xn signal xn is periodic and if the ratio n1 by n2 is an irrational number then the signal xn is a periodic and when signal xn is periodic then we go on calculating the fundamental time period n and if it is a periodic then this implies there will be no fundamental time period n. Now there is one catch. We know n1 is an integer. I have already told you n is an integer. The fundamental time period is an integer. So n1 is an integer. n2 is also an integer. So the ratio n1 by n2 we are talking about is simply equal to an integer by an integer and we know integer by an integer is always going to be rational so the ratio is always going to be rational and whenever the ratio is rational signal xn is periodic so this implies our composite signal which is a composite discrete time signal is always going to be periodic in nature so whenever you are dealing with composite discrete time signals there is no need to check whether the ratio is giving you the rational value or the irrational value. Simply move on to the calculation of the fundamental time period of xn which is n and we know how to calculate n. n which is the fundamental time period of the composite signal is equal to LCM of n1 and n2. So once you solve this you will have the fundamental time period n so this is all for the second part and now we will move on to the third part of this lecture and in this part we will try to understand what is the condition which must be satisfied for all the complex exponential and sinusoidal discrete time signals to be periodic whenever you have a continuous time sinusoidal signal or continuous time complex exponential signal they are always periodic but 
discrete time complex exponential and discrete time sinusoidal signals are not always periodic there is one condition and now we are going to derive that condition and for this we will take one signal xn which is equal to a naught e power j omega naught n and we know the condition for this signal to be periodic this is the condition so xn should be equal to x n plus k n you can consider the case of right shifting as well but i have considered the case of left shifting and we know xn is equal to this so on the left hand side we will have a naught e power j omega naught n and on the right hand side we will have a naught e power j omega naught in place of n we will write n plus k n let's say k is equal to 1 to simplify the things so we will have n plus n and now in the next step i will separate the exponentials so we have a naught e power j omega naught n on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have a naught e power j omega naught n multiplied to e power j omega naught capital N e power j omega naught n multiplied to a naught will be cancelled out so we are left with 1 equal to e power j omega naught n e power j omega naught n and we can write 1 equal to e power j 2 pi k now on comparison you can see that omega naught n omega naught n is equal to 2 pi k so here i will write down omega naught n is equal to 2 pi k and we can say that 2 pi 2 pi divided by omega naught is equal to n divided by k and n divided by k will give you a rational number because n is an integer k is an integer integer divided by integer will give you the rational number so 2 pi divided by omega naught will give you the rational number if the complex exponential signal you are having or the sinusoidal signal you are having is periodic so this is the condition for discrete complex exponential and discrete sinusoidal signals to be periodic ratio of 2 pi and omega naught should be rational so this is all for this lecture in the next lecture we will solve few questions based on the concepts we have developed in this lecture